It kind of looks like a Glock, but it has some better features. I mean, it already has forward slide serration, so that's cool. It's got a Picatinny rail. It does take Glock magazines, but what's that? That's a, is that an Anderson logo on the Kyger 9C by Anderson Manufacturing? Yes, it is. Woo, let's talk about Anderson's new pistol. Yes, pistol, the Kyger 9C. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms, here to introduce the Anderson Kiger 9C. Yes, Anderson Manufacturing, the same guys that are bringing you affordable build parts, lower receivers, things like that for your ARs, are now stepping their toes or getting just getting involved with the pistol side of things and bringing to the market a very affordable, complete pistol. Uh, pretty much based off of the Gen 3 Glock design, it's something that uh, is very lightweight coming in at about one and a quarter pounds and it just, I don't know, it's a polymer framed, steel slide, gun, striker fired, right? So I mean, it's a pretty interesting thing. Uh, let's just go ahead and hit on a couple of the components or some of the features right off the top. So. 416 stainless steel uh, slide that is also the diamond light carbon coating the dlc finish that's both on the slide and the barrel you'll also know the barrel has this nice crown on it it's also recessed so that way you don't have to worry about i mean if you drop it or anything like that you don't have to worry about the barrel at all getting damaged which is kind of a nice thing and impeding any type of accuracy you'll also notice because the barrel is recessed a little bit more and doesn't stick out if you've got this up against something or someone and you need to get a round off you can pull that trigger and it will go right now granted if it's too far back you know it's still not going to happen that's just going to be true with any type of firearm but that's something that i kind of noticed if you know a get off me type of case or whatever it might be here pull the trigger cool so uh, speaking of the trigger, let's go ahead and talk about that really quick because it's a uh, five and a half pound trigger. And you'll notice we have just a little bit of take up. How does it compare to like a, you know, Glock trigger? Similar, slightly better. It's definitely, definitely not as squishy, has a little bit shorter reset. It feels a little bit more crisp than your standard Glock trigger, which is a nice thing. Slide release is only on one side, on the left-hand side, and notice the grip texture, grip styling, all of the frame itself. It's no longer just an accessory rail right up here that you see on typical Glocks. You actually have a full-length Picatinny rail, so that's a pretty nice thing. And just to reiterate too, this is based off of the Gen 3 Glock design, which is why I keep bringing up Glock. It's obviously competition for about half the price. So that's interesting as well. Now the texturing on the frame itself is pretty aggressive, but it doesn't feel so aggressive like I'm gonna be cutting up my hands with a lot of shooting and I've got three fully loaded mags and I'll let you know how I feel after shooting all those, right? But you'll also notice right back here on the back strap, uh, it is also nice and textured. You got these grooves right in here for your gripping pleasure to make sure this thing isn't gonna be sliding out of your hands. Extended beaver tail right back here, which is gonna prevent you from doing anything weird like this and then pulling the trigger and having that slide come back and uh, hurt you, get a little bit of slide bite action happening right so nothing like that that i would really really want sights on it that come on it are pretty basic as you can tell just your standard rear and white dot front sight easy enough and the grip style just coming back to that really quick it's a little bit different so it's, it's more squared a little bit more blocky uh, than what you would think when i first picked it up i was like hmm i haven't really felt anything like that that's pretty interesting so you'll notice that you've kind of got like these Areas that have been shaved off for your thumb to rest, or even right up here where the texturing is, but I kind of don't mind that right there if I'm just shooting it single-handed. If I got my non-dominant hand in play, that I would be shooting it just like that. Also, one thing I am liking about the positioning of the slide release, it's not right where I'm gonna be hitting it, which is a nice thing because on my Gen 4 Glock 19, I somehow always manage to hit that thing, and on my last round, it doesn't lock back like it should, it's because I'm riding my thumb on it, so I have to kind of like keep that in mind. But where this feels at right now, feels like everything's gonna be cycling and I won't be actuating that on accident. All right, uh, we can go actually go ahead and disassemble this. It does disassemble just like any other Glock, you got your little tabs here that you just pull down on either side and it comes right apart as you see. So <clears throat> internals look pretty uh, 
like a Glock, right? As you would expect. All right, let's go ahead and just take these out here really quick and see how the, don't you roll away. Also, this is brand new. We haven't put any type of lubrication on it, no oil or anything. We're gonna shoot it dry as heck because we wanna see how it's gonna perform and see if it's gonna shoot under those types of conditions. But the barrel, as you can see right here, nice short little guy. All right, go ahead and put you back just for fun. There's your recoil spring, just one piece. You'll remember like in the Gen 4s, it's kind of has like a two piece design or two different types of springs are kind of moving against each other. Again, Gen 3 design. All right, and we'll just push that guy back into place. There we go. Taking a look at the frame of the gun, the actual part of the firearm that is serialized and consider the gun. There you have it, locking blocks and everything are all, uh, they've removed pretty much that roll pin design, which they're saying is gonna eliminate any type of flex in the frame or anything like that. So it should uh, increase reliability and accuracy. Okay, sounds good, but does it shoot good? Well, let's take it down range and find out. Very first shots with the Kyger 9C by Anderson. It does ship with one 15 round Magpul PMAG. Let's see how this thing feels. All right, that feels really solid actually. So, I mean, what more can you expect? Really, it's a lightweight, again, coming at about a pound and a quarter, uh, polymer framed, striker fired pistol. So recoil impulse feels really, really good. It just feels like it's straight back. Uh, it does seem to have a little bit lower bore axis than what I was kind of anticipating it to have, I guess. Uh, let's see, I mean, controls still feel really good to manipulate. Like I said, I was kind of watching where I was shooting and then I was kind of waiting like, oh, where's my hand position? Is that slide gonna lock back? And it did, so I was happy about that because like I said, the slide release for me, sometimes I'll rest my dominant or sometimes even my non-dominant thumb, depends on where it is, uh, on it and, you know, actuate it on accident, not allowing, you know, the magazine to do what it's supposed to do. But you'll also notice that the slide release is a little bit recessed, so it's kind of hidden a little bit more, so you're only going to be hitting it whenever you actually mean to, so that's a nice thing. Cool, let's run through a couple more rounds to it here and see how it feels. I've also got some standard Glock magazines, 15 round that you'd find like in a Glock 19, just to see how this feels again. That does feel really good. Out, except I put the empty mag in it because that's typically where I put my magazines in that location on my body. That's funny, good job, Clint. So it does feel really good. I mean, just everything about it. There we go, come on. <laughs> so, I mean, the recoil impulse, it's sharp. It's got a little bit of a pop to it, but it doesn't feel really abusive or aggressive. Uh, I'm just gonna go for the distant target there, but just focus on that kind of like recoil up, because that's what really, let's see if I can even see the thing. Just to the right. Oh, I had two shots and that was just low. But ultimately, I mean, it really does feel good. I'm pretty impressed by how it feels. Granted, standard sights, it's not like this is really bright sticking out in front of you, but again, if you wanted to replace those, it looks like that would be something easy enough to do. In fact, uh, while I've got it here, let's just I just wanna see again. Again, super easy to take apart. The barrel's not all that hot. Yeah, it looks like you just take your regular Glock tool, so it just looks like your standard uh, Glock front sight tool, and you'll be able to pop that guy out and then put on whatever type of sights you want, it looks like. So that's a nice little thing. Again, still looking pretty good internally. I don't see any like, you know, stupid wear or anything like that. That's gonna be happening in that area. So yeah, everything looks pretty good in it. Again, the Kyger 9C by Anderson. So if you're looking for a affordable, affordable, you know, polymer framed pistol uh, that just seems to be running really good. Looks like a uh, fantastic frame on this gun as well. The texturing and everything feels really good. I'm sure with a, you know, a lot more rounds, uh, we'll, break that trigger in even a little bit more and get that thing feeling even smoother because right now it does have a nice crisp take up. It's not really spongy and then a nice short reset, right? So let's go ahead and show that one more time. You'll see where I got, come on back, start to have a little bit more pressure and then that striker drops and then the reset. Not bad at all. Again, about five and a half pounds for a 
what can easily be a concealed carry gun if you ask me. You got that double undercut type of frame as well. I'm gonna keep going back to this frame. It's a nice thing. Uh, I think it's a SCT frame that they decided to go with and it does feel really, really good. Feels of good quality. And again, you've got that undercut right here underneath the trigger guard. And then you'll see how high up it gets uh, right back here towards the grip and the trigger guard itself, allowing you to get way up high on that. And the beaver tail being a little bit more extended pushes back just past the web of the thumb. So you don't have to worry about when that slide is coming back, getting hit back here at all. It hasn't hit me and it feels pretty good. Awesome. Again, full length Picatinny rail, happy about that. And then you can see there again, that crowned and recessed barrel. I mean, that thing's not protruding whatsoever, which again is a kind of a nice feature also for the aforementioned uh, things that I was talking about before. But yeah, so far I'm really impressed by it. I, again, especially for the price point, if you're looking in, I mean, it's, it's, it's very affordable, put it that way, right? I mean, Anderson's known for making affordable quality parts that just work. Uh, so if you're looking for something a little bit more budget friendly for a can carry gun, maybe a home defense, or just something to offer you a little bit of protection, well, check out something like the Kyger 9C. Again, we've only got three, three mags to it today. What you saw on camera of us shooting it is the very first time ever shooting it. And what can I say? It feels good. I like it a lot. Maybe I need to go load up the uh, mags and, I don't know, run a, run a couple more. Uh, maybe. Let's go do that. Just 15 rounds really, really quick. All right, let's just see here. Yeah, that does feel really good. No complaints from my end whatsoever. The Kyger 9C seems to be running just fine. Again, brand new, right out of the box. Haven't lubed it up, nothing like that. And so far, four mags, no problem whatsoever. And of course, we're going to continue to shoot it. And so we are probably also going to, after maybe a couple hundred rounds, go ahead and break out a Glock 19 and do kind of a, a comparison video and see how they feel. Of course, this thing right here has holster compatibility with just about all the other Glocks that are out there. So that's kind of nice because, well, look at it. And of course, if you wanted to throw on your type of light attachment, you can. And so that's kind of a neat thing as well. When you think about how many aftermarket or how much aftermarket support there is for Glock, it kind of makes sense why if you're going to build a polymer frame striker fired pistol, you kind of want to frame it after a Glock. <laughs> so that way you don't have to worry about getting special holsters and things like that made. So there you have it. The Kyger 9C by Anderson 15 plus one capacity, of course, taking Glock magazine. So if you wanted to throw a drum mag in it, you could do that as well, or the 17 round mags, completely up to you, base plate extensions, whatever you wanted to do uh, to get yourself a couple more rounds in there, you can do it. But again, nice compact design, shoots pretty well. I, I mean, it's been working just fine for me and it does have a really good felt recoil impulse. And uh, that's something I would just say, if you can get your hands on one, go try it out, right? I mean, Anderson, like I said, is known for putting out some decent stuff at a nice price and so it's like cool so now you're doing it with pistols and well I've shot much more expensive pistols that sometimes didn't work right out of the box or did absolutely need ballistol or something to help it get to that point of reliability where I'd feel comfortable about shooting a video on it so it's like okay nice to have something just right out of the box and run so that's kind of cool but anyway <clears throat> especially for the price point that it's at, all right? So we'll probably get a Glock 19 if I can find a Gen 3. I'm sure we got one laying around in the warehouse somewhere. Maybe do a comparison video between that since it's based off of the Gen 3 design. But yeah, just let me know down in the comment section below if that's something that you would like to see. But we'll leave it off there. Last thing I wanna talk about, of course, is our current giveaway, the HK MR762A1. Pretty much the M110A1 Lite because, well, it doesn't have the Geisley rail and the, you know, IR low, IR observable property type of colors and things like that, but it's super cool still. And it is our current giveaway, like I said. Use the code word 417 to get yourself a couple hundred extra entries. Again, at classicfirearms.com is where you can do that. So guys, I'll see you down in the comment section below all about the Kyger 9C from Anderson and what your thoughts are on it. But from there, I think that pretty much covers everything. Yeah. So guys, we'll catch you next time at classicfirearms.com. God bless and see you soon.